This is segment three. Linnell Williams, one of Black and Microbiology's programming team leads and a PhD student at Harvard University, studies physics and virology, straddling two fields in which Black women are extraordinarily scarce. During her time at Harvard, a wealthy institution in a progressive community, she has dealt with colleagues who have touched her hair without permission, dismissed her admission to her graduate program as affirmative action, and used racial slurs in her presence. Over the years, she said, I've gotten used to people not expecting much of me when I walk into a room. At the University of Georgia, Dr. Taylor was the only black doctoral student in her program. Her love for science was sparked early by films like Flipper and Free Willy, which instilled an obsession with dolphin and other cetaceans, she said. After initially pursuing studies in veterinary medicine, she stumbled onto the world of infectious disease and was instantly hooked. Oh, there she is. Seems like a vibrant person, doesn't she? Colorful and laughing. Kishana Taylor of Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh. And she's a co-founder of Black and Microbiology. Dr. Taylor said she aims to start her own laboratory someday focused on the intersection of humans, animals, disease, and the environment. Intricately connected factors that can each tip the scales toward an infectious outbreak. But by the end of her PhD, Years of toxic interactions with colleagues who pelted her with criticism and condes condescension had pushed her to the brink. I was super ready to leave science, she said. Everything you do is terrible, played over and over in my head. Mentorship from new advisors in her postdoctoral fellowships helped change that, Dr. Taylor said. But ever since, she has fought to ensure the same thing won't happen to another student in her position. Championing her fellow black microbiologists, she said, is a step toward that. I think of the lot of I think a lot of the message is we are here, said Dr. Johnson, who also leads an outreach program to connect black, indigenous, and other undergraduate students of color to academic mentors. In 2014, during his postdoctoral fellowship at St. Jude Children's Hospital in Memphis, Dr. Johnson gave a public talk on one of his favorite topics how copper affects microbes. He was floored when a black woman from the audience approached him afterward. Her comment wasn't about micro microbiology, at least not directly. They said, my kid wants to be a scientist. I didn't know a scientist could look like you, he said. Breaking through to those communities is important. I think this week will be a wonderful contribution to that. And that's the end of the article. And as always, New York Times also has lots of connected articles or things that you might be interested in based on your reading of this article. They always have great pictures. So check out the New York Times science section. Interesting article. Let's look at the pictures of the people again. Here's Dr. Taylor. She likes whales and dolphins and marine life. I do too. Dr. Frierson. Can't remember what she does. Former virologist. Oh, and she's currently a dean. So she's working in academia. Okay, and this is Dr. Corbett. She's making the vaccine for COVID. Here's Dr. Johnson, who studies how metal affects bacteria. And there's Dr. Kozik. Great. I got to check out that program they're putting together. I'll talk to you guys about it next week.